So, helping Mr. Ibasiak part one, insert Stappy title here. Where's my hammer? <sighs> yes, hello, my vacuum cleaner charms, don't worry. This is a hammer free zone for now. So, we have a load of bits really, which we need to try and make into a vacuum cleaner. Now I have no idea why this did or did not work. Apparently it's never worked, so that gives us something to go on at least. So for now, we're going to, I'll bring it a bit closer, and we'll check the wiring. So I want to plug it in for myself and see what is actually the problem with it. Oh, so first thing I'm going to do is grab the multimeter and we'll just do a very quick sense check of the wiring. Let's check that, that is going to beep 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 and neutral neutral we have neutral and we have a live we can follow the live all the way to can we follow it to the switch no actually right, I can't follow it to the switch because obviously the switch is ah I can follow it back from the switch so we'll put this on the plug in theory, Ooh. it's not working. Oh, there we go. So we have a live from, well, a feed from the plug to the terminal that receives the switch. After that, there's not much more I can do because it all then starts to run through the motor. Mm, there's no signal there though from across the motor. Those two terminals there basically go all the way around the whole loop. And there isn't anything there. Although the top carbon brush does. But not the bottom one. I wish I knew what these numbers meant, because I don't know if you can see the screen there, but if I turn the armature, they move. Why do I get the feeling that this is going to be possibly the same issue that the... Oh, driver, possibly the same issue that my 1334A had. I'm going to try it, you know, we're going to... Lump straight in to having the motor out. So, one motor, all we need to do now is remove these three screws. One. Two. We can see inside of it and unfortunately it looks like the carbon brush is actually okay on this side which is a bit of a shame because I was rather hoping it wouldn't be but hey ho <coughs> yep yeah, that's definitely touching oh, a bit of broken plastic there but I can't see that being of anything of humongous importance right there's no broken wire there that's not a broken wire i think we shall put this back together and see if it just runs i thought i'd check that first because 
why the devil not? But I don't think our problem is with the carbon brushes. So, let's get this back into the machine. So, one motor back in, one switch wired up, one cable fitted. We'll pop the spark investor plate back on, just in case there are any sparks. There we go, it's not sitting quite right because not everything is in place. I haven't fitted the headlight because I want that out of the equation. There we go, so we have one screw for the spark investor plate. Ooh. Don't appear to have another spark investor plate screw. So, yeah. Oh, well, I've got really old gear because I can get some more of those. Let's see if this little one will just fit in, just to hold it in place. There we go. I'll put a pop of one in it another day. Um, all that really remains to do now is to turn it on and see if it explodes or not. So, I'll just move this out of the way. Come on, put it out of the way, and we'll see what happens. Ooh. Well, that's a thing. This is a little bit grindy, but I probably haven't put it together 110%. Let's try that again. I reckon I might know what this spare armature is for, you know, because that's almost exactly what Mr. Hooverlaxes did spam very, very slowly. So I think we need to have this back apart and fit this other armature. Then we'll see what happens. So, one poorly Hoover Junior motor. It's not going to be terminal. It's just going to be a minor blip in the matrix. We'll soon have it running perfectly well. And we're going to start by doing two things today. First is we're going to take out the suppressor. A, just in case. B, because I want to do it anyway. Secondly, we're going to try this armature that Roger put in the box. Now, this isn't going to be the tidy, neat way of removing a suppressor. This is just going to be the get it working way. Because... I'll put some nice crimps on it and get it, get the wires chopped down, but I don't have nice crimps on me today. So basically, this is what we're going to do. Now these black wires here, obviously run through the suppressor. If you want a nice detailed version of these, I suggest you go and look up a track called the Vintage Vacuum Emporium. Mr. Steve Cook, he did a lovely video on how to remove a suppressor. I'm just going to sort of rush through it a little bit. But you basically just need to join the wires up the other side of the suppressor. And the way you do this is to basically cut, take out one of the wires, strip it back, twist it up, and that's where the wire goes from there. We're just going to basically connect this to that screw terminal. Nice and simple and lovely. Is that any better with a nice one? Mm. Marginally, I suppose. But obviously, when I do the full refurb, once it's working, I shall put a nice crimp in there, trim the wires a little bit so they're not quite so massive, but I don't care about any of that today. I just want it to work. So, I'll just, just tweak the cable around the screw and sort of make it just drop in nicely into its little hole. If uh, Yeah, we'll do it this way first. 
I was going to say we'll have the suppressor, the um, coil chain, the blah, 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 blah. start again. We'll have the armature out, but you know what? We'll do this and we'll see if it fixes it. Why not? Now, this red wire here is the other side of the suppressor, which comes straight from the field coil. So it comes from the field coil all the way around into one side of the suppressor, then back out and to there. All we're going to do is basically connect this straight to there. So the wire, so the, so the wire, so the electricity flows through. In fact, yeah, well, I can cheat here for now. Because on this terminal is a spade adapter for the headlight lens. So what I'm going to do is take this spade connector for now. Like I say, I'll, I'll put some nice thin crimps on it because we'll need that for the headlight when we eventually get it working. But for now, we'll put that on there. I do need to take this off though, saying that, to remove the erroneous wire from the old suppressor, which is now no longer needed. And I'll show you why it's no longer, well, why I don't want it. Anyway, obviously they can blow I personally never had a junior or a senior suppressor blow. However, I have had others, Electrolux mainly. They seem to be my Achilles heel. But I've heard that they go with a big bag on these because they're metal and not plastic. The plastic ones just sort of smoke and sting. Possibly do go pop. But they're mainly just sort of annoying. Whereas these, because they're metal, they go kaboom when they go which won't be any good for anybody plus this one i noticed it yesterday it's all a bit corroded i mean there's lots of white powder on it i don't quite know where that's come from doesn't smell of anything doesn't taste of anything but yeah basically we don't need that anymore we do need these though and these screws. And that is because the suppressor obviously bolts through there. That holds the coil. And if I sort of, you can maneuver it a little bit. Basically, the coil doesn't then sit right. And the other thing, we, we might test this in a bit if this doesn't work. But I always like to put the clamp back in because I've never been too sure. If it doesn't work and we need to swap the armature, we'll test it. I've never been too sure whether this bracket spaces these screws out so they don't go through the coil and scrape on the armature. Never been too sure of that. So we'll fit them back for now and then when we get it all apart, we'll quickly pop the coil in and we'll see if it does actually work or not. So there we go. I think we'll test it down here. We'll just put the wires back in for the mains. Like I say, this is only a proof of concept here. Is it going to spin or is it going to go... Da, 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 da? I don't think this is going to do it, I'll be honest. I, I reckon it is something else. But you never know. Every day is always a school day. It's worth a try, and for the purposes of this video, you might find it interesting, although maybe not. But say so this is a this is one of those technical lectures where we work out what the problem is, we fix it, and then I go off and actually make the cleanup look nice. We're a long, well, but yeah, we're a long way off. We're, we're a long way off that. Although the cleanup does already look nice, but it could look nicer. Yeah. Put the screw down, doesn't need to be pretty. And then I think it's already on. So basically, I'm just going to stand back, plug it in, and no difference at all. So it wasn't the suppressor, which is fine, I'll be honest. I wasn't fully expecting it to be, I just fancied seeing if it was or wasn't so we'd better have this apart and we'll start by removing the top carbon and associated 
there's only a few wires left now it's all right now that we haven't got the suppressor flying here there and everywhere so we'll have that out and put that over there the live from the switch the live from the other switch these can run with literally two wires as long as two arms of the coil are connected and you bridge the switch you don't need any wires on a junior motor really they're ever so simple that's why i'm not too worried about this i mean if all else ultimately fails if this doesn't sort it if a different coil doesn't sort it and it is something completely unexpected i'll just stick another motor in it and we won't tell mr roger which his beloved he did call this a name i can't remember now i'll have to I have to have a look in a minute. Barbara, Bertha, Betsy. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll have a look in a second. Now, during the sniff test, it does smell a little bit electrical. Not going to lie too much there. It does smell a little bit electrical. So, we need to remove some stuff. We need to remove the rear bearing carrier. Right, uh, we'll have that off. Come on. Obviously, that's also got this nut on it which can come straight off. Ow. That hurt, you two can come off. You can, yes. Then we can take this, this is like the earthing strap for the suppressor. In fact, we don't need it anymore, so won't be refitting that. Okay, then we need to take the front bearing clamp off. And then the whole thing will just lift out. There we go. Now I don't, I'm, I don't think it's the coil. I think our issue is going to be this somehow. Although I can't really see any actual damage on it but the problem is it breaks down in such a way that you just can't so I'll have the fan off and the bearing um, associated and basically we're just going to swap these two around and see if it makes a difference I mean, the new one looks cleaner so it could be, I was say, any one of those wires could have broken down, anything could have happened. You just, unless you have a very expensive type test facility, you just won't know. And I think, I doubt anybody's got the means to test one of these for electrical safety now. I imagine all that kit's long gone. I'm sure Hoover could have done it back in the day when they actually had service people. They probably would have had some sort of test equipment. But those days are gone now, sadly. we just got to swap out parts until you work out what the issue actually is. So, oh yeah, we were going to have a look at the coil, weren't we? Oh, that's interesting. On some coils, those holes go right through. On this one, they don't. So actually, we can do away with that back it because there's no need to space it out so that works now am i going to regret not removing the carbon brush or can i fiddle it back in and then hold it while i drop the armature in place sort of hoping i can because it would be ever so handy about although 
I have forgotten the rear bearing, so ah, right, back out it comes. Uh, we're going to have the carbon out because I just don't can't be bothered. In fact, there were some new carbons in the pack, in the pack, in the box that this came in, but I just don't think they're that knackered. We'll compare them in a second. Let me just drop this in. Something isn't quite lining up. What's not lining up? What is going on? That rear bearing is very dry. That's going to sound awful if it runs, but that's fine. We can deal with sounding awful. We can fine tune that at a later day. Well, on the flat, there we go. So, obviously, that's catching everywhere because it's very, very loose. So, to stop it being very, very loose, we need to put the front clamp in. And the other screw is here. Go. We'll put the rear clamp in. What have we got? We've got one screw that goes from the back in to a thread on the clamp itself. And the other, which is a nut and a bolt affair. And the inside, you won't bother with that stupid bit of very green corroded wire, actually. I don't know where Roger, where I basically got this from, whether he's, maybe he's just sat up in a damp loft. <laughs> Funny, that's where he's putting all of his vacuum cleaners this weekend, apparently. There we go, right, so. I'll put this carbon holder here. I shouldn't take the mickey out of him having them all in the damp. Well, it probably isn't damp in a loft because that's where all mine are, unfortunately. I'd love to have a massive room with them all out, but it's just not practical. So, in the in the loft they go, and they're either in the loft and I have them, or they're not in the loft and I have to get rid of them all. That is, unfortunately, for any of you youngsters out there that have visions of having masses of vacuum cleaners, the stark reality of it all, I'm sure... Mr. Ibasiak will do a vlog of his stuffing his mum's loft full of stuff. You've seen my loft a few, well, my loft and my mum's loft a few times. You just have to put them where you can or not have them. Right. That's going to go in there. Check it still spins. Oh, that rear bearing is stiff. There we go. Got to put the wiring block in and then we'll quickly pop the screws in place. Oh there we go. Why are you not going? What have I done to you? Well, just to rule anything out, we shall put if I can find them the coil screws in, because if the coil isn't sitting 110% perfectly, nothing will. So we'll put these in. Yeah, see, I think something has leaked from that suppressor, because I can see it. You see that white stain there? So it's good to get it out. See, they don't go in fully. They're going in enough to make it solid but they're not going in fully fully right so that is nice and that'll be why this wire isn't tucked in 
quite as well as it could be. There we go. Alright, let's try again. That's better. Put the wiring block in using the black wire that we left in as a reference for the orientation. Although you can always tell because there's always a gap there and those two will be the mains that goes out through that hole there. Little tippet for you there. Oh, that's my finger at a silly angle. Ha! Ow. They've had finger cramp before. There we go. One. Two. There's the other one, I lost track of where the screw was then. Okay. Then put the top carbon in. So there are new carbons in the box, but they look fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. And they're not original Hoover ones because there's no Hoover logo on them. But a carbon brush is a carbon brush has carbon will brush so there's nothing to to do about that I mean, if, it, if it doesn't work then we'll change them but we'll give them the benefit of the doubt first rule out one thing at a time what I don't like doing is literally changing everything and it works fine because then you don't know what didn't work in the first place so what uh, so whilst I could have just lobbed everything new on and turned it on, yeah, it worked. I wouldn't have been able to tell you or know for future reference what didn't work. It's all, yeah, it's all knowledge. We'll all learn something if this, when this works. I mean, right, these are pretty robust. Almost the cockroach of the vacuum cleaner motor. But when they go, they go. It's always good to have at least five ideas, or a few ideas, come on, in your head, when you do get one that doesn't work for a pound for me, bail or the car boot, so you can literally straight away start rattling through them and work out what the problem is, and you might be able to fix it. There and then. Right, so that still spins, lovely. So this needs to go in there, as does this one, which basically just connects them up through a nice terminal block so it will have you there you there in the first block put the brown wire from the switch in to the brown wire from the mains cable There we go. Fit the mains cable. I'll retrim these because they were a bit tatty anyway. So we shall make them a bit nicer eventually. For now though, don't care, just want it to run. So neutral to black. Black is always neutral, red is always live on these old ones, and then really it's stand back again time. Ta da! There we go, we had a failed armature. Like I said, nothing visibly wrong with it, but 
somewhere some sort of insulation has broken down and caused it to not work so that's two then we can now say that we have seen two physical examples of armature failure on a junior motor Dorian's U1040 I got the V third thread for that mitten up there and now Mr. Ibasiak's U1034. Right, I'm going to wash my hands so I don't get it unnecessarily grubby and then we'll give it a test run. Exciting stuff. Right, clean hands, well, clean her hands so I don't get this unnecessarily dirty. We have a pile of rubbish, although I keep the wires because they're always quite handy actually because they're a nice thickness. That's definitely rubbish. Now, we can put this back together, but that does involve having to sort out this bag of stuff. Because, oh, I know what I forgot to bring. Magic. There's a wheel circuit missing that he asked me about, and I've got loads of those, but I completely forgot, well, I wasn't expecting it to work, I'll be completely honest. Uh, we'll work it, we'll blag it. We shall give this a test run. What is the time? Mm, might be able to give it a test run today. If not, I shall seamlessly cut this video. We should give it a test run another day. So, right, let me just. I, I, I do need to cut the crimp off there because obviously we need to plug the headlight in. Hang on. There we go. So, let's just fit it back into the machine, which is a little bit easier now there's no massive suppressor in the way there. Then, we have two of the screws here for the motor, and two here. Uh, where is my... Oh, I don't know if I've lost that already. Oh, bother. I have something that I need now. No, oh, there it is. I don't have on me a magnetic screwdriver, so we have some instant magnet. Some blue tack. Because the problem with the bottom motor screws is that you have to have a long screwdriver for a start. Mine is bent, but works. And basically, very carefully, go down and insert the screw into the hole which is there oh that's what the other holes for there's another screw missing <laughs> right, I see how this is going to work and that would explain why there's a few more of these uh, right so we need four motor screws I was in the right hole I don't often get the wrong hole, but occasionally it happens. And once it's started off, you're right, you're laughing, you can pull out, grab the next screw. Here. And again, very carefully. Proceed to Get it started. What's that? I just noticed some blue look around the switch housing. That's flipping polish. Not good polish either. Good polish is not blue. Mr. Roger, have you used myrrh by any chance on this poor thing? I don't like myrrh. It's not a polish. It's a scuffing agent. We'll soon fix that though. Oh, my seal, my seal is crimping. Don't want a crimped seal. Hold it down until it clamps in. There we go, one. I don't know how long this has been apart. 
I did neglect to ask, hopefully by the time this video comes live, Mr. Roger will tell us in the comments, because I know he's possibly quite looking forward to seeing this. I won't tell you why, I'll let him tell you that. But obviously we'll be seeing this again on his channel. I am merely just the, the fixer. Right, there we go. We also need this last screw. Form. Oh, I'm getting my fingers. The bot. No, I can't. There's another screw for the suction duct. Well, it's not a suction duct. It's the air blowing duct, which isn't fitted. So we'll fit that because obviously, or we won't. Oh gosh. Uh, okay. Maybe there wasn't ever a screw there. I wonder why there's different screws there. Oh well. Obviously, this is why if ever somebody sends me just a box of stuff I like to do this and basically get it working and then back together exactly as it should be so when I start on the actual refurbishment which is where the fun actually happens it's a straightforward strip down yeah I mean we could get our nice Manchester Vax project threads out I don't know does it, do any of you ever read those I enjoy writing them, so I'm, I'm, I'm not, not going to start, but hopefully it'll give either people that like just looking at vacuum cleaners. That's why I do them. I used to love just looking at pictures of vacuum cleaners in various states of strip down. I used to absolutely love it, and that's basically why I do it now, in the hope that somebody else loves it too. Right. We can, if I can find my small equal screwdriver. Oh, God, what's that done? This is too big. It's not good, you know. There we go. Because the neutral for the lamp needs to go on the neutral from the cable. So we need to have this out. Ooh, that's annoying. Have this out and put this in. So we have the neutral from the light, because obviously it needs a neutral. Everything needs a neutral. It's a non-earth machine, so it just has a live and a neutral. Although, if our Roger starts a third channel where he collects old TVs and radios, he's going to have to throw away half of his collection or go to Maplin's and get RF suppressors, because they're the only ones that sell them for... I mean, they're expensive, but you haven't got to buy 10,000 of them. This is what RS components sell, so there we go. We'll tuck that all in nicely there. Tuck that around there, and we are getting there. I won't re-strip the cable now. I'll do that on the strip down, because I can pop a nice crimp on it. And it can all look lovely for now. We'll just stuff them in. All willy nilly, although in the right place, obviously. That this cable could do with a good polish. It is a job I don't hate, is I don't like it, but I then don't hate it. It's a satisfying job, it's clearly a cable, especially a really filthy one. This one's not too bad, but I've had the my. The convertible dynamatic one was flipping terrible. You'll see that on the refurb thread. My concept one will be the same. It's just black filth all over the cable. But it will come up beautifully. I always like to leave a little loop as well. I don't know why. Yeah, I have, I've just noticed, forgotten to fit the very bottom hook that holds the cable onto the doobry. Holds it onto the bottom of the handle, but I'm not stripping it off now so it can stay. Right, handle bail now. Well, I wasn't falling out of that. Oh, God. Ah! It's the other screw, I think. No, no, it's not. It's a machine. Oh, where's that come from? There's no screws in the handle bail. 
we'll just ignore that for now. Could be used as a screw for the um, thing. What's the word I'm looking for? The switch cover. Could be used for that, but it won't be because it's a different thread. I can't bodge this because obviously I've got oh, Roger will rumble me. It's got to be perfect. Not that I bodge anything. If it needs a little helping hand repair, it gets a little helping hand repair. But well, I know I've got a box with about five of those screws in it in the shed. I'm not going to suddenly start to chuck different ones in. That's wrong. I think. Yes, it is. I'm putting the wrong screws in the wrong holes. Well, that's a bit of a bench grinder over, I think, and spend the lunchtime. All weekend at home. It's always easy at lunchtime because it's daylight. That's the problem nowadays. Now it's getting dark. I can't do as much at home because the kids go to bed. What might be a bodge though is I'm going to move the rear wheel inner and put the circlip here. Just so it holds it enough. Just for a little test drive. It's, it's not going to be permanent. Just enough, just to push it around and the wheel not fall off. In an instant second. Right. Then we need the other two of this thread screw. I have to hold it a bit, sorry. Hang on, let me get the screw started and I'll move my hand out the way. Just hold it. In fact, I probably could have put it in the missing place because it would have been held by that, but never mind. It's not permanent. So the spark of Vesta plate can go in. do the slightly odd screw up there is a different thread but because it's so short by the time I get the proper long one in it will sort itself out really so that's okay right marvellous getting there we need a belt it's also a good time to yeah. it's smoothish but I can feel under my fingers that the bearing is possibly not in the first flush of youth. I can't even get the cover off. Ooh, all that. Yeah, that one's... It's going to need new brush roll bearings. So it might not sound beautiful. It doesn't need a repaint though. That's the first. I mean, there's a few little flecks here and there. But I'll be honest, it's not... I'm not going to be able to make it much better. Ooh, Mr. Ibasiak pattern belt. I watched the Electrolux Professional video last night with the pattern belt fit... Well, the, the genuine belt that snapped fitted because it was old, I think, or say it's just such a vicious machine, it just literally ate itself. Eh, nothing wrong with pattern belts. Oh. This isn't going to slip. Ow, 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 ow. Oh, that's the, is it the one with hand? No, right way around, lovely. Right, let's just check whether that still works. Ah, 
let's check the switch works. Yes, it does. Well, that's moving itself along the carpet. That's very nice of it. Right. We need handles. Have a look. Handles, handles. I can say the that bit should slip down there and sit there, but it's not going to because I'm not having it all apart just to fit that. Because I have to take the cable off the machine. It's just not important. The pedal bucket needs to go on. All good. There's no handle bail malarkey needed. Uh, that way. Nice intact plastic cord hooks. Very rare to see, I'll be honest. doesn't quite have the correct bolt for the handle but it'll be fine utterly utterly fine so I'll put that on that hood's very blotchy looking at it from this angle it's sort of bits of it are really yellow and bits of it aren't I reckon I have a sneaking suspicion, everybody, that we might be seeing a little bit of our retro biting video on Ibasiac next year when the sun comes back out in the UK. I know he goes on about. Oh, that's annoying. Ooh, we don't have the other bolt for the handle. <gasps> Bother. I don't have one on me. I don't think I've got anything that I can bodge in either. That's too big. Yeah, we don't have... Ooh. And I've got tons of them. So I'm not too fast. That might that will hold it well enough. I'll just put two screws on it to hold it. It'll just be a bit wobbly. Yeah, it'll just be a little bit wobbly because it's missing something. Right. The bag now. Oh, we're nearly there, folks. Oh, gosh. That one, nearly, nearly, just slip on. Come on, how long have you been sat in a box? I would have thought you'd want to go on. Try it the other way. I don't mean I'll take the camp off, I might have to. I don't think the camp's actually doing much to hold it in. nearly ready I now cannot find where I put here it is I don't know if there's a bulb in it <laughs> should we just stick it on and see because if there's not a bulb in it or it's blown I haven't got one anyway on me so we may as well I'm just going to do up those little screws very very gently in case this plastic is brittle There we go. Oh no, there is no belt. There is no light bulb fitted. And I don't have one to hand. So we can't do that. But we can fit. We can fit it anyway and give it a whirl.
and that is not too bad. It runs a little bit stiff because it needs obviously a good lubrication. But there we go, the U1034 ready for refurbishment or fix. So there you go, Roger. The old girl runs. Now it's time for her spa day so she can shine. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. But actually, I'll see you soon. You won't see this soon on video. Embargo time now until it's done. There will be a refurb thread, but for now, Next time you see this, it will be at Chez Roger. Say bye-bye.